Thank you all for coming this morning. Uh, this is uh, to introduce the first speaker, Eddie Schumann, who will be speaking about thinking inside the box. Please welcome him. Hello, everyone. Um, so thank you for coming to my talk today about how our team used Python to adapt to an existing data ingestion pipeline. So my name is Eddie Schumann. I've been a software developer with Pacific Northwest National Library Laboratory <laughs> in southeastern Washington for about four years now. I've used Python for the majority of that time, and I've really fallen in love with the language. So first, an introduction to the talk. So the talk today is going to be about how we used Python to ingest, that is, process and standardize the raw radar data that we dealt with. It's not going to be about the data itself, rather our particular use case and how we leveraged Python to adapt to existing systems and constraints. So the project that I spend the majority of my time on is for the Atmospheric Radiation Measurement User Facility, or ARM for short. So ARM is a key contributor to national and international research efforts related to Earth's system changes. Uh, ARM was started by the United States Department of Energy in 1989 and has grown to be managed by nine national laboratories. So ARM has some extensive data collection efforts. It has six atmospheric observatories collecting data from around the world and has had more than 30 past research campaigns. The data is standardized and made available to researchers at no cost. And ARM currently has radar sites in Alaska, Oklahoma, the Azores in the Atlantic Ocean, and Cordoba, Argentina. So as for the radar instruments themselves, there are multiple radar types, multiple versions, different frequency bands, and they're provided by different vendors which taken all together means that there's a wide variety of different data formats that we need to accommodate. So our job for the radar ingest team is to process this data, standardize it, and classify it by frequency band, instrument type, and scan strategy. So with a long running data program means that we need to adapt to some existing ARM systems and constraints. So uh, the first system we need to work with is ADI, the ARM Data Integrator, which processes most of ARM's data products. We need to set up process definitions, which define which ARM sites actually have radar data that we need to ingest. And we need to create data object designs, or DODs, to spe define specifications for the output data such as the dimensions, variable names, variable metadata, or product level metadata. And these data object designs require review and approval by ARM's metadata group in order to make sure that they meet ARM standards and are actually useful for users. So the ADI system's functionality, it features automatic data averaging or interpolation, enforces data standards in the DOD specifications, it provides error checking and enforcement of variable dimensionality. And operationally, the data integrator tracks which instrument data time intervals have already been processed, preventing the operations team from accidentally re-ingesting the same data or ingesting really old data. So some of the difficulties we faced while creating the radar ingest was that we need unique readers for each of the instruments. We need to properly integrate the data integrator into our workflow. We need to set up data design specifications and process definitions. We need to consistently meet ARM standards. And through it all, we wanted an understandable workflow and code structure for future maintenance and development efforts. So with the setup of the data design specifications, normally, for our processes, we would set them up through a GUI web application, which is fine for other data products, which may only have a couple of data designed uh, specifications. But the radar ingests would need more than 800 DODs. And a small change in one of the ingests, such as changing a variable name or the units for a variable, 
would result in needing to change over 180 of these in the worst case. So this is a quick snapshot of the radar ingest workflow. So we start with the raw radar data on the left and work through the different ingest components until it's ready to archive. We also include utilities and data definitions that are referenced throughout the ingesting process. So first, I'm going to talk about how we handled the data definitions and setting them up. So our solution for creating the data object designs was what we call the Python Radar Toolbox. This toolbox is utilized across all the different radar ingests. It contains scripts, helper functions, and configuration files. But mainly, it contains multiple JSON definition files in five main categories, moments, variables, auxiliary variables, global attributes, and auxiliary attributes. The moments we define as the most uh, data-intensive variables and are usually the most interesting to users. Uh, the auxiliary variables and attributes are used by the radar technicians and engineers to diagnose issues with the radars or the radar data. So a quick side note. So for each stage of talking about the implementation, I'll reference some specific modules that were helpful for that stage in the process, and they'll be covered in the top right banner. So first, we created a JSON definition file for each one of those main categories that I mentioned before. So inside these are all the different variables and attributes of that category that any of the radar ingests might possibly use. And they create the DOD required metadata Ah, sorry, they define the DoD required metadata for that particular variable or attribute, such as the descriptive names, the data types, the associated dimensions, or the units. We also have Jeff JSON definition files for each frequency instrument combination. So these define the product level metadata, such as the instrument name, the valid scan strategies for that instrument, ADI process name, but they also contain a categorized list of all the different variables and attributes from these previously mentioned categories that are utilized by that particular data pro product, which helps us generating the DODs later. So for the actual generating of the DODs, the ARM development system has a utility script which is able to load Perl hash representations of the DoD definitions into the database. So we can generate these data design files from these JSON definitions. Taken together, we can take all the variables that were in the categories at the product level definition and then check their entries in the category level definitions to fully flesh out the data specification. We then load them into the database one at a time. So for small updates, like the variable name changing or an update to data types, as I mentioned before, we can generate hundreds of these DODs and load them into the database in less than a minute. This circumvents navigating through hundreds of DODs through the web application and saving them one at a time, which we found to be untenable. And then finally, we can go back to the web application to review the DODs we generated to see if it triggered any of the web applications inbuilt checks before we send it off for review. So throughout the generating process, we naturally use the JSON library because it makes it effortless to read from the JSON files and load them into Python native dictionaries. So we tried to design the toolbox with iterative growth in mind. So the Python Radar Toolbox also collects a variety of utilities shared across the ingests. As we notice common functionality between the different ingests, we try to generalize it as much as possible to stick it into the utility functions in Python Radar Toolbox. So the toolbox grows more refined and useful over time. As the JSON definitions are updated, fixes propagate across all future ingest development and future releases. A couple of the helper scripts we created, uh, mmtune.py, which updates instrument definition files according to the past metadata review feedback. So new feedback from reviewers is applied into the script, and then the script is run on all future and updated ingests. The review process becomes streamlined over time as all the past feedback has already been applied to the future ingests. 
So another script we created was setPrimary.py, which interfaces with a database API to classify certain variables as primary measurements. ARM data discovery and archival tools can direct users based off the most important measurements to help them find the data they're most interested in. So for this stage in the toolbox, uh, once again, we used JSON to read in the definition files. We used argparse for handling all of our scripts command line arguments. We used request library to make calls to the APIs, and we used get pass for handling user credentials. So now I'm going to talk about the actual ingest components themselves. So the first lowest level component is the reader component. As I mentioned before, the, across the radars, there are different radars, vendors, and software versions. And even radars from the same vendor can have significantly varying data formats. So the reader structure is designed to match the input data as much as possible using vendor data structure and variable names. It effectively acts as a sort of documentation for the input data. A developer should be able to look at the structures in the reader component and quickly understand the structure of the underlying input data. So for the reader component, uh, one of our vendors outputs HDF5 raw files, so we read that in with H5Pi. But we mostly use NumPy's from file function to read custom binary formats, as most of the vendors prefer to provide their own binary format. So the second middle component in the workflow is called the standardizer. So for the standardizer, the overall structure matches between the different ingests. It has the same functions and attributes available, especially the moments, variables, auxiliary variables, global attributes, and auxiliary attributes, the same five categories that kept showing up in the definitions earlier. The inner workings of each function or attribute can vary significantly. So the standardizer is designed to serve as a translation layer between vendor structure to ARM standards on things such as names, units, or other various metadata. Sometimes it's as simple as categorizing and renaming a variable. Other times, it might just be unit conversion. The vendor might supply nanoseconds, and we might want seconds. And sometimes it's as involved as calculating a new derived variable from multiple vendor-supplied variables and attributes. So for the standardizer, the end result should be that all variables and attributes are categorized the same across all the ingests. The data is accessed nearly identically for each ingest writer, and all the variables and attributes from the instrument definition JSON should be saved and match the definition names in the standardizer. So throughout the standardizer, we use NumPy for easy array handling and array-based calculations. And as ARM's data is usually in NetCDF format, we use NetCDF for type converters to prepare the variables for writing. So the final highest level component in the radar ingest themselves is the writer layer. So each writer for each of the ingests is nearly a clone of the others. So we eventually want to create a gen generic writer that we can stick in the radar toolbox and use across all the different ingests. So the writer sets up the data integrator's out input and output interfaces. It runs the reader and standardized com standardizer components to read in and translate the raw data. It uses the instrument's JSON definition files to verify that the expected entries do in fact exist. It calls the ADI Python bindings to transfer the data into the ADI system. And then it tells the data integrator to store the data set, at which point the data integration system performs ARM standard compliance checks, data quality checks. It verifies that the given data interval has not been processed before. It saves the file into the ARM's file system and readies the files for archival, and it logs any events that may have happened during ingest processing and sets the operational status of the ingest. So for the writer component, we used custom ADI bindings to interface with the data integrator. And once again, we used NumPy and NetCDF4 to prepare some of the product level variables and attributes for writing out. So 
after we were done ingesting the data, we would inspect the data to make sure that everything was processed and handled as we expected. So we would use NetCDF4, X-Array, and NumPy to read in and manipulate the data from the files. And we would use matplotlib for easy and pretty visualizations. And the whole thing was a bit easier to do consistently inside of a few Jupyter notebooks. So a couple of reasons why we specifically chose Python. Um, one of the things we wanted to do is be consistent. Uh, the old set of radar ingests were written in a mixture of C, IDL, and Python by a variety of different developers with different coding styles and wildly varying structures. So we wanted to consolidate it into one language to encourage code reuse and utility functionality. The biggest draw for us for Python was the incredible flexibility that Python ad offers. So it allowed us to use Python at all the stages in our development workflow. It allows to do quick and dirty data inspection, one-off scripts, helper functions, configuration libraries, the bulk of our data processing with NumPy. And Python continues to have emerging technologies and libraries and a large pool of developers to help. Uh, another draws, draw of Python was readability. Uh, as you know, Python was designed with readability in mind and is described as almost pseudocode. This means that we can actually share code snippets with researchers and developers who may not have even touched Python and still get constructive feedback on algorithms, workflow, or calculations without them knowing the language. We can also share it with those familiar with Python and the readability facilitates a quick understanding and a short onboarding for new developers. And finally, familiarity. Our team members already had moderate to extensive Python experience, and many of our colleagues at the lab have been picking up Python because it's such an incredibly popular language, finally. <laughs> it felt like a natural choice. So, in conclusion, Python is incredibly flexible. It has an immense utility for a wide variety of developers. It can be a small part or the heavy workhorse for a large project. And our team found that its flexibility helped us to adapt to a wide variety of required systems and constraints. So we do want to eventually make the toolbox publicly available, and we're working on it. Uh, if you want to talk about the ARM data pipeline or lessons learned, the radar ingest data, uh, share your experience, or if you've got some cool library suggestions, feel free to contact me at any time. So thank you for coming today. <laughs>